Hello and welcome to our lesson on solving systems of linear equations in three variables. This is going to be from section 3.5 in our text. I believe I'm going to be able to cover everything I need to in only three examples. So we're only going to have three examples here. And at the very beginning, I do want to point out that if you own a Casio FX991EX, you're in for a treat. All right, so the first example we're going to look at is number 23. This is going to be the easiest version of these kind of problems to solve. Notice that we do have three equations with three unknowns. X, Y, Z are our three variables. I think it's important to point out at the very beginning, if you hope to solve a system with three variables, you do need three equations. OK, so that's a general rule that the number of variables you have indicates the number of equations you need in order to be able to solve for the variables. So if you have a setup where some of your equations are missing variables, then that's going to have a shortcut. And I'll go ahead and identify the steps to solving any of these equations. What you need to do is you need to get one of the letters to cancel twice in a row, unless, like in this case, you have some variables missing, and then you might be able to get away with just getting a variable to cancel once. So our objective is to limit the system from three variables down to two, and then we can solve the system like we did in a previous section. All right, so using my mathematical eye, I notice that if I were to add the first equation and the third equation together, that would get the Z's to cancel, and I would have an equation left over in terms of X and Y. Notice the middle equation is already in terms of X and Y, and so then that will give me two equations with only two unknowns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the side and I'm going to recopy the first equation. And I'm going to rewrite the third equation right underneath it. And then we're going to take those two equations and we're going to add them together. X and X is 2X. The plus Y comes down. Now watch this. Bam. The Z's cancel. 57 and 6. 63. Now, with my purple pen, look at these two equations right here. Now I have two equations with only two unknowns, and then I can solve for x and y. So we're going to bring those over here to the side. Negative 2x plus y equals 3. And then the red equation, 2x plus y equals 63. And again, if you're not sure where this guy came from, that's this equation right here. So I just recopied him, brought this equation over, and now we're going to add those together. And how nice it is that the x's are already going to cancel. So the two x's cancel y plus y is 2y, 63 and 3 is 66, and then by dividing by 2, I've got y. y is 33. Now, when you're solving a system of equations with three variables, you do need to find x, y, and z. And so what we're going to do now that we know one of the variables is we're going to work our way back to the beginning. So going back to here, one of the middle steps, we're going to plug in 33 for y, and we're going to be able to solve for x. So that's going to give me 2x plus 33 equals 63. Moving the 33 over makes it minus 33. 63 minus 33 is 30, and then if I divide both sides by 2, I'm going to have my x value. And so we can see that x is 15. 
And now that we know X and Y, we can go back to one of our initial equations and find Z. Now, it doesn't matter which of the first three you pick. I would go with, I don't know, what I think is the easiest. I think the bottom's going to be easy to use. So let's plug in there. Because there is no Y, I only need to replace X. So X is 15 minus Z is what I'm looking for. And then if I move the 15 over, makes it minus 15. So that gives me negative Z is negative 9. And then if I change the signs on both sides, I've got Z. And so that tells me Z is 9. And now that I know all three variables, I can write my solution as an ordered triple. Okay, it is important that you know that your solution to a system of equations with three variables is called an ordered triple. And it does have to go in order, X, Y, and Z. So here the final answer is X, comma, Y, comma, Z. That is our final answer as an ordered triple. Now let's talk about what that actually tells us. Graphically, these three equations would represent three dimensional lines. So what we found here, this ordered triple represents the point of intersection of all three equations in three dimensional space. All right, next example, we've got problem number one. And notice in this setup, we do have three equations with three unknowns. And every equation has the variable X, Y, and Z. So this is going to require that we take two of the equations, add them, and get a letter to cancel. For example, if I add the first two equations together, I can see that the Y's will cancel. So then the goal after that would be to get two different equations to add and get the same letter to cancel. You have to get the same variable to cancel twice in a row. So let's go ahead and start by adding the first two equations together. X plus 2X, that's going to give me 3X. Y minus Y is going to cancel. 5Z plus Z is going to give me a plus 6Z. And negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. And so there is our first equation done from adding the first two equations together. All right, so now I have to get the same variable to cancel. If I look at the blue equation and the red equation, Y and 2Y, those are not going to cancel. So maybe I want to look at the green and the red equation. So looking at green and red, well, at least the Ys have opposite signs. And so I am going to go ahead and use those. So this time we're using the green equation and the red equation. However, the green equation, in order to get the Ys to cancel, he's going to need a 2. Legally, if I want to get a 2 in front of that y, what I'm going to have to do is distribute. I'm going to have to multiply the second equation through by 2. And then, well, you'll see where we get after that, okay? So let's go ahead and distribute. That's going to give us 4x minus 2y plus 10z equals negative 10. And then if I simply recopy the red equation, that's going to be minus x plus 2y plus 2z equals 1. And now if you look at those two equations, if I add them, look, bam, those y's are going to cancel. So 4x minus x, that's going to give me 3x. 10z and 2z, that's 12z, and negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. So, at this point, you can probably tell that this is a long process. I'm sorry about that. There's, 
There's no shortcut doing it by hand. But at this point, I would like to point out, if you look at the two black equations here in the boxes, you will see that we have two equations with the same unknowns. And now we can get either X or Z to cancel. Now I'm noticing that the X's are identical. They're both 3X. So if one of those was negative, then if I add them, the X's would cancel. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one of those equations. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to multiply through by negative 1. And then I'm going to rewrite that right here in the center. Okay, so that's going to give me negative 3x minus 12z. And that's going to make that a positive 9. And then I'm going to recopy this equation below it. 3x plus 6z equals negative 3. And then I'm going to add these together. Bam, the X's are gone. Negative 12Z plus 6Z, that is negative 6Z. 9 minus 3 is 6. Oh, I'm so close. Just got to divide by negative 6. And I'll have the first piece of the puzzle. Z is negative 1. Woohoo, I found one of the three pieces. Now then. Remember, once you find the first piece of the puzzle, the first variable, you're not going to go back to the initial equations first. You're going to go back to one of your intermediate steps, and then you can go back to the initial equations, okay? So you kind of have to work your way back to the beginning. Now, it doesn't matter whether you pick this equation or this equation to plug into. But we're going to have to replace Z in one of those two equations, okay? So I'm going to go with the first one, this guy right here. And we're going to bring him down. And that's going to give me 3X plus 6 times Z is negative 1 equals negative 3. And then I'm going to solve that for X, okay? So 3X minus 6 equals negative 3. Bringing the negative 6 over makes it a plus 6. 3x equals 3. Uh-oh. Right on the edge. Divide by 3. Look at that. Now I've got x. x is 1. And now that I know x and z... Bam, now I can go back to one of the original equations. Doesn't matter which one you pick. I'm going with the first one, okay? We're going to plug back into the first. And that's going to give us X, which is 1, plus Y, I don't know, plus Z, which is negative 1. Z is negative 1, equals 2. And wouldn't you know it, so freaking easy. 1 minus 1, they cancel. And so that gives me Y is 2. And now remember to finish it off. Now that you know all three variables, you need to write your answer as an ordered triple. So the final answer is X comma Y comma Z. And one thing I did not mention in the first example that I probably should mention here, if you want to check your solution, you need to plug that back into every one of your initial equations, and it must work out. Okay, so in order to check your solution, it's got to work in all three equations. All right, for our last example, number 19, here we have another system of three equations with three unknowns. For whatever reason, we're using R, S, and T. So when you write your ordered triple at the end, it needs to be in alphabetical order. And just like we did before, we're going to have to get the same variable to cancel twice in a row. So what I'm noticing, using my mathematical eye, I notice that this sign 
for the S's is different. So what I might consider, I might consider getting the first two equations to cancel the S and then use the last two equations to cancel the S again. So I think that's going to be the route that I take this time. Of course, it doesn't matter which variable you, you get to cancel, but anytime you have one of the variables that has an opposite sign, then that's probably going to work to your advantage. So what I noticed from the first two equations, if I add the S's, they're not going to cancel, but it is pretty easy to turn 3 into 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the first equation by 2, and that'll turn my 3 into a 6S. Okay, so then let's bring that guy over here. Distributing the 2 is going to give me 4R plus 6S plus 2 times 12 is 24T equals 8. Now, if you skip any of these multiplications, like if you're going too fast and you forget to multiply the 4 by 2, let me just go ahead and warn you that's going to result in instant death, okay? Any simple mistake, instant death. Next, we're going to recopy the middle equation. Just recopy it. And then if I add those together, notice the way I've set it up here, the S's are going to cancel. So 4 and 4, that's going to be 8R. 24 and 6 is 30T and 9. And we're going to put a box around that. This guy's on hold for a second. Now, let's go back to the beginning. And I'm going to notice that if I add these two together, this S needs a 6. So that means I'm going to need to distribute a 6 to the bottom equation. Let's do that in purple. Bam, distribute a 6. And we're going to need to rewrite that somewhere. Let's rewrite him right down here. 6R plus, oh, this is easy, 6S plus 6T. Since it's just RST, there's just going to be six of them. 6RST equals 6. And then I'm going to recopy the green equation right below that. 4R minus 6S plus 6T equals 1. And then notice if I add those together, bam, the S's cancel again. Okay, so adding, we're going to get 6 and 4. That is 10R plus 12T equals 7. And then if you compare the two equations in the boxes, you're going to have the same two variables. And then your goal is to get either R or T to cancel. Now, after I've looked at those for a few seconds, I'm noticing that 8 and 10, it's, I don't think it would be super easy to get those to match, but 30 and 12, I don't see a least common multiple that's easy to achieve for those either. So they're both going to be equally fun and exciting to get to cancel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the R's to match so that they will cancel. And it doesn't have to be the least common multiple, any common multiple that you can come up with. So that those R's match and cancel, that's going to achieve your objective. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this equation by 10. And I'm going to multiply this equation by negative 8. Now, if you're wondering why was the 8 negative, remember I need those R's to cancel. 8 times 10 is positive 80. 10 times negative 8 is negative 80, and then they will cancel. And I'm going to bring those results over here. 
So multiplying the 10, 10 times 8, that's going to give me 80R. 10 times 30, oh my gosh, that's going to be big. But we're going to work with it. 300T, 10 times 9 is 90. Next, we're going to distribute the negative 8. Negative 8 times 10 is negative 80R. Negative 8 times 12 is 96. Negative 96T. And negative 8 times 7, negative 56. And then, if I add these together, the way I've designed it, the R's should cancel. So, all I need to do is the math now. 300 minus 96, that's going to be 204T. 90 minus 56, that's going to be 34. And then, oh, I'm so excited, I'm almost to the end here. 204, divide both sides by 204. Whew, and I've got the first piece of the puzzle. Uh-oh, 34 divided by 204, that doesn't divide nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my handy-dandy calculator because I know that it will express this fraction uh, reduced to lowest terms. And I'm just going to type it in with the divide by symbol. You could also use the fraction button if you want. But we're just going to say 34 divided by 204. And if you have the Casio class whiz, it's going to give you the reduced fraction first. So that's going to end up being one sixth. So now that I know T is a sixth, then remember I've got to work my way back, not going back to the originals first, but going back to one of the intermediate steps. So one of these black equations, either here or here in order to find R. Now the one you want to choose is the one that you can multiply a sixth by and get it to work out nicely. Luckily for us, if I plug in T here, I can take a sixth of 30. That'll work nice. Or if I plug in T here, I can take a sixth of 12. So either one of those is going to be equally easy to replace T with a sixth. And so what I'm going to choose is this one. I'm going to use this equation. And I'm going to scroll down just a bit. So that's going to give me 8R plus 30 times T is a sixth equals 9. 8R plus. What is a sixth of 30? Well, 6 goes into 35 times. And then if I bring the positive 5 over, that's going to make it negative 5. So that's going to give me 8R equals 4. And look at this. I'm to the last step. If I divide both sides by 8, uh-oh. That's not nice either. 4 divided by 8. Well, I can do that mentally. 4 eighths, that's a half. Don't need the calculator for that. So now that I know R and T, I can bounce those back to one of the original three equations. So since the bottom equation doesn't have any coefficients, I'm probably going to plug into that equation. It doesn't matter which one you pick. Just pick the one that looks easiest to you to plug into and then go with it. So R plus S plus T should be 1. R is a half plus S, I don't know, plus T is a sixth should be 1. If I plug back into that bottom equation, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine like terms. What is a half plus a sixth? Well, if you're not sure, you can either get a common denominator and add those, or you can use the handy-dandy calculator and do one half plus one sixth. 
and it'll tell you two thirds. Either way is fine. Do it manually or electronically. Either way is fine. Next, we're going to bring the two thirds over, which is going to make it minus two thirds. And that's going to give us our final answer here. One minus two thirds is a third. And so now that I know all three variables, remember you need to write that solution as an ordered triple in alphabetical order, RST. One half, one third, one sixth. And that is our final answer. And that answer is effed up, but you can't help it. Sometimes you end up with fractions. Now, if you manage to hang around this long, you're in for a treat. I'm going to show you how the Casio class whiz can solve these equations for you. What you want to do from the home screen is you want to go to menu, scroll down to the equation slash function, hit equals, and we are solving a system of linear equations. That's the same as simultaneous equations. So number one. And the number of unknowns is the number of variables. So we have three. You're going to notice that it says X, Y, and Z. Just correspond that to R, S, and T. And all you have to do is input the coefficients of the first, second, and third equation. Here we go. 2, 3, 12. And then if I hit equals, it's going to go to the constant which is four. And do you see that? You just go across doing one equation at a time. Four equals negative six equals six and one. And for the last equation, that's going to be one, 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 and one. One, 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 and one. Now, once I've input all of the values for all three equations, if I hit equals, it's going to tell me the answer for X. So if I scroll down just a bit, you're going to notice that that value for X corresponds to the value we got for R, which was a half. Okay, so it's given me the first solution. If I hit equals again, it's the second variable Y corresponded to S and Z corresponded to T. So the calculator, the Casio class whiz, does have the ability to solve a system of equations for you. X, Y, and Z, or in this case, R, S, and T. Man, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments about anything that I've done in this lesson, please feel free to leave those in the comment section below. Or you can text me, and thanks for watching.